When it comes to preventative maintenance or repair work on retro consoles, one of the most common tasks is replacing old aging capacitors, also known as recapping. Specifically, this involves swapping out electrolytic capacitors, which can leak over time, corroding the pads and causing serious damage to the console's circuitry. In a recent video of mine featuring the rare Packin 1 PC Engine module, I covered five different methods for removing and replacing these surface mounted capacitors. Although it wasn't the main focus of that video, many viewers found this information helpful, with user Falcon Mick even suggesting using it to make a dedicated video so that it's easier for others to find. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And as an added bonus, I'll also be sharing a method I didn't include last time. Honestly, because it still kind of freaks me out. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into five ways to remove surface mounted capacitors. All right, before you start removing those old capacitors, the first thing you should do is assess the condition of the board you're working on, especially the capacitors themselves. On my Pack N1 motherboard, many of the capacitor leads and pads are in good shape, as indicated by the shiny, lustrous solder on the pads. However, some are showing signs of corrosion, a clear indication of leaking capacitors. Depending on the condition of the capacitors on your board, you'll need to adjust your technique accordingly. Okay, so now that we've sort of assessed the situation, let's start the process of removing all the electrolytic capacitors. To do this, you'll want to add a good amount of flux, which will help eat up some of that corrosion and aid in their removal. You'll also want to add some fresh solder to the leads, which again will help in the removal process. Now, like I said earlier, I'm going to show you five different ways to remove these surface mounted capacitors so that no matter which tools you have, you'll be successful in their removal. The first one is what I call the rocker method. What you'll need to do is heat one of the leads and then tilt the capacitor gently in the opposite direction. This will ever so slightly lift the cap's leg off the pad. Be careful not to use too much force as you do not want to put too much pressure on the pad and risk damaging or lifting it. Then do the same on the other side and then back on the other. Keep alternating sides until the capacitor is eventually removed. Again, the key thing to remember with this style of removal is to take your time. Don't put too much pressure when tilting the cap and ensure that the solder is melted prior to tilting. Follow these steps and you should be able to remove the surface mounted capacitor just like that. Then clean the area with some isopropyl alcohol, remove the residual solder with some wick, and then clean it again to be left with some fresh pads that are ready to accept a brand new capacitor. Now this next method of removal is a bit controversial, but I find that it works pretty well and have had good luck with it. It involves using flush cutters. Now what we can do is cut the aluminum can near the base, but we need to cut parallel to the leads as shown here. The idea is to put as little stress on the leads as possible, thereby reducing tension on the pads. I place my spudger on top to place some downward pressure, as well as prevent the can from flying across the room. Once it's cut off, remove the bottom part of the can as shown. And then trim the top part of the leads as this will help allow us to remove the plastic base below. Now apply some flux as well as some fresh solder to whisk away the remaining part of the capacitor legs from the pads. Then again clean the area and then use some wick to remove the old solder from the pads. Now this next method involves hot air and is probably one of the least risky ways to remove surface mounted components. I like to add some fresh solder to the leads prior to hitting it with hot air. While temperature and flow rate depends on the application, I was using a medium flow at around 400 degrees Celsius. While heating the area evenly, I gently hold the capacitor, waiting until the solder melts so that I can lift it off. Now you'll notice that there is some red stuff in between the pads. This is actually glue that was used during the assembly process to hold the capacitors in place. Unfortunately, since many of the caps are held on like this, it makes using hot air rather difficult since it holds the base down even though the solder is melted, so I actually won't be using this method to remove the other capacitors. And if you have a desoldering gun, you can use that to remove the residual solder from the pads instead of solder wick. It's a great tool to have and this also helps the process go a lot quicker. Okay, this next method I'm not really a fan of and actually never used it since I'm just too afraid it will lift the pads and that's the twisting method. 
I've seen this method used quite a bit online, and I think it can be fine if you're confident in the strength of the pads, but I would exhaust all other methods first before using this one. Now, since publishing the pack in one video, I've received comments stating that many of you actually have had great luck with the twist method, so I decided to give it a go. I have a Game Boy Color motherboard that I use for parts, which has a few surface mounted capacitors on it to test this method on. The leads look to be in good condition, which gives me confidence in attempting this method. From my understanding, the proper technique is to twist while applying a slight downward pressure. You do not want to twist while pulling up at the same time, as this would put excess stress on the pads. The goal is to twist to break the lead's connection to the capacitor. Okay, taking a look at the pads, they look to have survived this method of removal and are fully intact. But you have to understand that these were in very good condition to begin with. If they were corroded, they might have been a little bit weaker and easier to damage. On the other hand, taking a look at the leads on the capacitor, I definitely noticed that they are twisted, which leads me to believe they are putting at least some pressure on the pads. Overall, this was by far the easiest method of removal since the plastic base came off with the capacitor, but I am still a bit wary of the method. I definitely need more experience with it and see how it works on more corroded pads to see if it would cause damage. Anyway, with the capacitor removed, simply proceed as usual by desoldering the leads from the pads and clean up the area. Alright, before I dive into the final method of removal, which just so happens to be my favorite, let me take a moment to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you have an idea for a new mod or want to assemble an open source project, PCBWay provides you with the tools to make them a reality. From 3D printing services in an array of materials, all the way to other services like CNC machining, injection molding, and of course, PCB and flex ribbon fabrication. So when it comes to taking your retro mods to the next level, PCBWay is the place to make that happen. Check out the link in the description for PCBWay to get $5 off your first order. And again, a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Okay, the last method I'm gonna show you is actually my favorite. I again add solder to both the leads, but this time to remove it, I use an amazing tool called Hot Tweezers. It's kind of like having two soldering irons attached to each other, allowing you to heat both leads at the same time. It makes removing surface mounted components like these capacitors super easy. However, again, since many of these capacitors are also glued to the PCB substrate, you can run into issues kind of like this. Here, let's take a look at that again in slow motion. Yeah, you see the hot tweezers worked and I pulled the capacitor off, but it was giving me such a hard time because of the glue that my dwell time on trying to remove it was too long and the heat from that long duration caused the capacitor to explode. I mean, you can see that the base of the capacitor is still glued to the motherboard. So if you have any tips for removing caps that are glued, let me know down below in the comments. And here's a closer look at the aftermath. Definitely take a lesson from me and ensure that your dwell time on these caps when using hot tweezers or even hot air isn't too long. And this is just another reason why you should always wear eye protection when modding and refurbing consoles. So to recap, pun fully intended, we went over five different methods for removing surface mounted electrolytic capacitors. My preferred techniques are using hot air or hot tweezers. The rocker method is a solid backup if all you have is a soldering iron, and the flush cutter method is perfect for situations like I encountered with the pack in one module where the capacitors are glued down. As for the twist off method, I'm still on the fence. It's fast and straightforward, but I'm still concerned about the risk of damaging the pads. I'll keep experimenting with it to gain more confidence, but if you decide to try it, definitely proceed with caution. Anyway, I hope you found this video informative and maybe learned a few new tricks that will help you maintain and preserve your collection of consoles. Now, if you have any questions or tips of your own that you'd like to share with the community or have any suggestions for a future how-to video like this that you'd like to see me make, definitely let me know down below in the comments. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I'll catch you again next time.